Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. I'm Jay and today I'm going to show you how to make a camera mount for your car or trucks door. Now this is real easy to make and this works awesome for wildlife photography if you're doing it from your vehicle. I live out in the country and I'll see turkeys and, and bald eagles and stuff in the field not too far off the road and if you slow down, they stay there and keep doing what they're doing. But the moment you open that door and step out and try to set up a tripod, they're gone. With this, I just simply have my camera already attached. And it's sitting on the seat. I do not uh, leave it on there. And I don't operate the camera while I'm driving. Please don't do that. Um, depending on what state you're in, you could get a ticket here in Minnesota, distracted driving. They give you a ticket and they would consider that distracted driving. Now I will admit I have put it on the passenger side and used it to get some video um, while I was driving down the road, but I wasn't touching the camera at all while I was driving. I started it, took off, I did it on a road in the middle of nowhere. There was no other traffic and I was keeping my eye where I'm going, not on the camera. There wasn't a problem there. Um, if you do that, try something like that. I would suggest doing it on a road. There's no other traffic. So, all right. Well, as of building this, uh, well, why don't we just start? I've got the head pulled off. Now, this is the only piece that is not glued together, and that's so it's kind of like a quick attach mount. So you can put it on there, and uh, you can have this already attached to your camera. And I would uh, suggest having a safety line that goes to, like, your inside armrest usually has a handle for you to pull you wrap it through there and then hook it to your camera I fortunately I'm filming on my camera and my DSLR is a little too heavy to put on here I probably could and be okay but I'm not gonna but some kind of safety line so for some strange reason the aliens hit you with some kind of beam and it pops out well instead of flying down and hitting the ground it's only gonna fall over and go a couple of inches and hopefully not damage anything where if it fell off of here all the way to the ground especially if it was pavement yeah you're probably gonna need a new camera after that but all right Tom um, so material wise you're gonna need a head now I prefer ball heads but you can go ahead and put a pan and tilt on here there's no problem with that it's all up to your preference if um, you're wondering well where can I get a, a pan and tilt head try um, Goodwills, grad sales. I'm always running into tripods that something there. I there's something broke on them, and a lot of times it's the legs or the clips for the legs, and you'll still find them at the Goodwills, Salvation Army. They will actually put them out with a couple dollars on them because they know people buy them. They want the heads and other parts, and I've probably got 15, 20 tripods in the house that I've put together from multiples because I see them for a dollar or two at the Goodwill. I buy them. Um, I see them for three, four dollars at a garage sale. I have to be a real nice one to be over five dollars. Uh, I will pick it up if it's fairly decent. Um, I use them for everything. I use them for light stands, microphone stands, just tons of uses. And uh, well, if you're out doing wildlife photography, you can use them to beat a uh, bear off you know, when he's attacking you. You know. All right. So for the rest of the materials, you're going to need a pool noodle. You can see that's kind of what's holding this on here. It's kind of pressure fit. You can see I can pull it off. And uh, it also helps keep you from scratching your vehicle. You are going to probably get some minor scuffs. Um, I ain't too worried about it. This, this is a 2000, early 2000s. It's got some scrapes and scratches here and there, so I wasn't too worried about it. But uh, I would recommend trying to find a pool noodle a similar similar in color. As you can see, this is this is a blue. It's slightly different, but it still looks better than if I had uh, you know bright red or green on there. And then of course, I spray painted the rest of it with a similar color. But yes, you're going to need one pool noodle. That should be plenty, and you should have extra because they're four feet. And um, then we're using half an inch PVC pipe, and I'm using that because that's what fits the pool noodle. If you get a pool noodle with a bigger diameter, you might need to go up to like a three quarter inch. You'll just have to see what fits yours. So for the PVC piping, you're going to need a few feet, probably, you know, full five feet should be enough and still have some extra in case you cut a piece wrong. 
I do believe the shortest you can get these though is six. I think I know you, the long ones, they're eight or 10. I'd have to measure. I've got, I got tons of this stuff. I use a lot of it, but yeah, you'll need um, five to six feet or just get the whole eight or 10 footer. They're only a couple dollars for that part. It's the connectors that they get the most money for. And what we're going to need for them is we're going to need four of these elbows. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. That makes four. We're going to need uh, three of these T's. There's one here, one here, and one here. Then we're going to need an end cap. Um, you don't need an end cap for down here. If you really wanted to, go ahead. But they charge you like 50 cents a piece on these connectors, sometimes more, depending on where you go. So I use lots of them. I buy the contractor ba bags of them, so they're even cheaper. They're about a quarter a piece if you do that. But it's a big bag. There's... I can't remember if it's, they come in, I think they come in 25s and 50s, bags of 25 and then bags of 50. Then you'll also need PVC primer and cement. You can find that at the hardware store, wherever you buy this. The local home improvement, big box home improvement store. Then uh, for tools, to cut the PVC, I recommend... One of these little miter boxes and saws. Um, if you're going to be building lots of stuff out of PVC, I'd recommend just picking one of these up. They're not very expensive. Works great for cutting the PVC. And that's primarily all that I use this for. Oh, excuse me a second. My allergies. Oh, allergies are getting me a little bit here today. Yeah, you can get one of them. That one I actually got at a garage sale. I think it was three dollars. It was a heck of a good find. Then you're going to need um, a drill and a drill bit. And well, my battery's charging, so if you're using cordless, make sure you got a battery. And uh, oh, there is one other part you're going to need on your ball head on most of your camera mounts. It's going to be um, a quarter inch bolt by 20 threads. That means 20 threads an inch. And that should fit most. Um, there is a larger size. This actually, my ball head here will unscrew and it has that next size tripod mount. But more commonly, it's going to be the quarter inch. And then I also took and glued a little piece of cork on here. So when I was videoing, doing video out the window while I was driving, once again, I was paying attention to the road, not the camera, but I didn't want it vibrating and starting to turn. So that just helps to snug it down. So you'll need that. As for construction, I can't give you exact measurements because every vehicle, unless you've got an S10, every vehicle is going to be slightly different. What you're going to want to do for your, your width of it, you can see it clears the door handle on the outside. On the inside here, it clears the door handle. Now these, the insides are shorter. They go down and just barely touch the armrest. The outside, it comes down and goes past, just a little bit past where the, the further outermost part of the door is because it's got kind of a curve to it. And then I want a little extra. The width is going to be, well, I didn't even use a tape measure when I built this. What you do is you cut your two pieces put your pool noodles on there, kind of hold them up in place. It helps if you have a second person, just kind of hold it up in place. And one person can hold the inside and outside PVC with the pool noodle on it, have your elbows on. Then have the, the second person hold the elbow in the center. And then um, remember it's about a half inch goes into the elbow and half inch will go into the T. And just hold your, your piece there and kind of judge roughly. And uh, I would recommend going just a tiny bit bigger than what you think it is. Cut that off, mark it, cut it off, then duplicate it. Um, I found that making both sides equal helps. And once you figure the first side out, then you can use that as a template for the other side. And then put it together and try pushing it down. Now you don't want the thing where you have to he-man it down and he-man it off. You want it so it's snug. But, and as you can see, this thing doesn't really move much. I got to jerk on it pretty good to get it to move. But you just want it snug because the pool noodles have some give. And that's what's working, um, acting as the compression to hold it in place. And, you know, if it's too loose, just take 
I use when I when I did this, I had it pretty close. I had to go back, and I think I took um, just a little over the saw blade width worth off of both, put it together. It worked. So then I took one, marked two more, cut it for the other side. Then I just figured, you know, kind of held it in place and judged it for the width. And then knowing I wanted to clear both door handles, that's how you do that. Like I said, there's no point in me giving you exact dimensions of how mine is built. I didn't even use a tape measure when I built it. And yours is going to be, you know, every vehicle it's going to be slightly different. But uh, do remember, um, on, on my truck here, I can take it off this side and put it on the other. And uh, in a car, if it's a four-door, your back door, you might get lucky and it'll work on all four. But if you build it for the front, which is most likely where you're going to want it, it, sh it will work on both sides. You just simply you take it off. Oop. Pool noodles are a little loose. Turn it around. Stick it on over there. Um, don't worry about getting it 100% straight. I am pretty close. I did notice that one leg is off just a little. No big deal. Is it like I'm trying to sell these? But uh, yes, as you can see, I, have, I painted it up. Pool noodles, similar color. It looks nice on there. It doesn't stick out, look gaudy. And you know, if I'm out using it, filming, I will leave it on there, but I will have the ball head off. So if I do get pulled over, um, uh, I've had the DNR stop me a couple times wondering why I'm driving down these uh, state forest roads so slow and stopping all the time and dressed like this. I like hold up my camera. I think you can figure out what I'm doing. They're like, oh, okay. But, um, it does make it a little stealthier. They're, if you have the camera off, they're not going to... If they do notice it, they're probably just like, hmm, well, whatever. We'll let you keep going. But, um, yeah, if you do have it set up on your driver or the passenger side door with the camera on it and you're filming while driving, they might stop you and ask you. And just be polite and explain to them, I'm not touching the camera. I'm just shooting some video while I'm driving for, like, some background. That's what I was shooting it for is for another video I'm going to be doing soon. I'm going to be doing it in front of the green screen, and I want to have that behind me going by, and I can slow it down. I was shooting at 60, you know, shooting at 60 frames a second, so I can slow it down, and it'll still look good and smooth. So, all right, I think we've went over everything we need to. Um, I can't think of anything else. Uh... I don't think I'm going to bother putting a website up for this because there's no point. Oh, there's, if you wanted to see, you know, I didn't paint down where the pool noodle's covered. And after lots of use, you're probably going to eventually need to replace the pool noodle. But these things are like a dollar. So I don't think it's going to be a big deal. And one of them, I had a little over a foot left on the piece because the ones I got, they were four footers. And, uh, I've actually got a box of them with all kinds, multiple colors. I think there's five different colors. But yeah, I'll bring it into the camera a little closer so you can see it. That's what it looks like. So hopefully, you know, you'll be able to, uh, if you're any good at crafts or just building stuff, I mean, this is pretty simple, it's straightforward. Everybody's is going to be slightly different. So, um, if I remember, I will put a uh, link to the, the Facebook, um, my uh, wildlife photography page, and um, check it out if you want. Otherwise, if you make one of these, take a picture of it on your vehicle and send it to me on Facebook, and I'll put it on there to show other people. And I will, I will be putting on Facebook a link um, to this, to this video you're watching right now. And I got some... Uh, Nice pictures on there that I've taken over the years. I haven't really uploaded any pictures so far this year. I have a few to put on there. I will get to it soon. So with that, um, I'm just going to wrap this up. So I'll say thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. Hope you found this information useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Really would. So I hope you have a great day. And, uh, well, have fun building and then going out and filming some wildlife.